how are you doing? <laughs> Hope you're well. Um, I'm Millicent Stevenson and um, I'm sort of jogging between two machines at the moment. Um, just trying to look at what's happening over here with any messages you want to say to me. And of course, um, looking in this camera here and making sure I, I look all right. <laughs> Vain, I know. <laughs> Anyway, first, I just want to say thanks to Lorna and Taz for inviting me to speak with you today. Um, it's just been um, really, really good to just be part of the Black History Month event that they've been putting on. And, and just to celebrate all things that's happening with it, salsa, exercising, um, talks. And I know you've just heard from Steve, um, very inspiring, interesting um, talk that he's been given there and something that's really really close to my heart now I'm working off my phone so I'm seeing lots of little things popping up so if you see me looking like this I'm trying to look through my very vocals and figure out <laughs> what I should be doing anyway um, today I just really wanted to tell you about my journey um, to success um, I am a full-time musician and I know some of you would like me to play today and usually I do, but today I thought, no, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you a bit about me. And when I finish speaking, I'll just take, check with Lorne and Taz. I will actually put um, some of my music in here so you can hear me. But if you're on YouTube, I'm there, Melissa Stevenson, the saxophonist. So today I just want to talk to you about my journey, who I am, and what success means to me. Um, it means a lot of things, but I'll get into that. And of course, I'd love to share 10 things I've learned about being successful. So I'm going to read you my bio and I'm going to let you and I'll tell you why I'm reading it. So Millicent Stevenson is a multi award winning saxophonist which features on BBC TV and radio. And just reading that line, I'm thinking, oh, is that me? <laughs> you know, you, you do, sometimes when you are successful, you don't think you are. But it's really about what people see and what people like and what they admire. So things like I have a single called Take Me to the King and it was voted number one on a music chart in January 2019, the BIWST chart. And it's also on rotation on Kick FM radio. I produce uh, a yearly show called Not Just Jazz and I have a live band. I have dancers, I have singers and it's great. And I put on uh, covers and original materials that I write. Um, my first sax teacher is called Andy Hamilton. Unfortunately, he's now deceased. But I'm so inspired by his work that I now... Ooh, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Just a second. Sorry about that. That's not my phone. <laughs> anyway, with Andy Hamilton, um, I just like the way he did things. And I go on and I teach uh, people how to play the sax. But I also inspire people through my podcast, Success Beyond the Score. And I love to help women as well get into the music industry because there's not a lot of women there. And I've been in the industry for quite a long time, so I give back in that way. Um, and I have an online community called Time for My Music for Females. I'm an endorser of Harry Hartman Fiber Reads. It's a German firm. And I'm a writer as well. I've written a, a recent post on the Musicians Union site called the journey of a menopausal musician. <laughs> you wouldn't really think about that, would you? That, uh, thanks Taz, I saw that message, I will do that, thank you. Uh, you wouldn't really think about that, but yes, I'm of a certain age, people, and menopause has just kicked in. So I've written a very interesting article about it. Um, I've also written another article called, um, Where are all the female musicians? And also one called, Children of the Windrush Generation Make Music. Um, I also have a free ebook called Revealed 25 Secrets of the Successful Gigging Musician, Singer, Rapper and Spoken Word Artist. And also I am on the Musicians Union, I'm a member of the Musicians Union and I serve on various committees including the Executive Committee. Now I'm rushing through all of that because when I read about myself I'm thinking who is that person? And you know what the thing is the reason why I do that is I didn't grow up with the word success in my life. Um, not to say that my parents were bad and they put me down or whatever, but it wasn't a word that was in our household. It was very much go to school, eat your meals, and when you finish school, get a job, and then maybe get married and have children. That was kind of the thing. Um, I was born in the 1960s, so I suppose that's the context 
of that. So when I decided to go into music, and that wasn't straight after school, I went into admin, I worked in the education department, teaching in IT, busy studies, things like that. But music was always my passion, always my dream, and I kind of put it off and put it off and put it off. But it wasn't until I was 42 that I decided, you know what, you only live once. I'm not getting any younger. I'm going to see if I can push out and do something about my music. And that's what I did. I pushed out and that's how I became a successful musician. No, I'm not 42. I'm now 57. <laughs> but it took me a while to get to the level of success I wanted. And I had to figure out this word success. You know, when people said to me, oh, what do you want to do in music? And where do you want to go? I'm like, oh, well, I just want to, you know, play a few songs. And um, yeah, I wouldn't mind playing on certain platforms. And But within myself, I knew I wanted to be successful. But I had to get to a point where I could even say the word success. And maybe, I don't know if that's the way you feel about your life and what you're doing, whether it's easy enough for you to say success or not. But for me, it was a journey. And um, so I said at 42, I changed what I was doing. I was still full time um, working in the business with my husband. And I gradually grew my music business until I could become a full time musician. Um, it was originally a hobby where I wasn't getting paid to now where I do get paid and I am headlining on different things and events and I play around the country and I do have work internationally. So what are the tips that I have? And I want to leave time for you to ask me questions as well. So I'm just going to give you some of the things I've learnt and um, look forward to hearing some questions from you. Well, one of the things I learned is age is just a number. I mentioned that at 42, I changed career and went into music. So age is just a number. And I've done a podcast. My podcast is called Success Beyond Score. It's on SoundCloud and iTunes. And it's an episode about age. And I don't think age should stop you doing what you want to do. Um, I think the only thing that might get in the way is health and ability. But, you know, if you practice and get the right coaching and um, do things differently, you can achieve your dreams. Um, sometimes the dreams won't happen the way you want. Um, one of the th points is things take time. You know, one of my dreams that within five years of being 42, I'd have a CD, I'd have sellout shows, I'd be here, there and everywhere, I'd have awards and all this kind of thing. But it didn't happen within five years. And the reason why I gave myself five years, I thought, well, who wants to see an old bird like me on stage? <laughs> That's why I gave myself five years. <laughs> but um, it was my music teacher that I looked at and in his 60s, he was still playing. And I thought, well, he's still playing in his 60s. And I saw someone else. Oh, they're still playing in there. Oh, well, maybe I can give it a go. But things take time. And it wasn't until seven years after 42 that I made my first uh, recording. And that happened by chance because I was performing and people were liking my music. And at the end of a show, someone would say, really like your music. Do you have any music to, that I can buy? And I go, no, I don't have anything. Don't have anything. And I was going to Milton Keynes and I rang up. Uh, um, I shouldn't say he's, an, he's now a friend, but someone I knew who lived in Milton Keynes. And I used to speak to him online. His name's Peter, Peter Daly. Uh, he plays for Paloma Faith at the moment on Keys. And um, he came and he heard my show and he said, you know what, if you had a recording, you'd make book it. I goes, really? And he goes, yeah. He said, send me something. And I wrote some music. First time in my life writing something. I sent it to him. He liked it. And, and that's how I got the EP. But that was like later in my 40s. And after that, I've created other recordings. Um, I have a single called Take Me to the King. And as, as I mentioned in my write-up, which did well at number one, um, I'm on another track, um, I Love You Just The Way You Are, which is a reggae track. And, and that's done really well. So don't let age put you down. Don't let it put you back. And there are always going to be people saying you're a little bit too old. You know what? Sometimes if it's really within you and it's your passion, you need to make some attempts to do it. Because... When you're on your deathbed, sounds really gory, but when you're on your deathbed looking back, you want it to be one of those things you can say, I'm glad I had a go at trying to do that, or I'm glad I was successful of that, because if I didn't try, I wouldn't have known I could have been successful. 
Um, number two, have targets. I'm rushing because I've got a short time and I've got to go and teach. So I'm sorry. So maybe next time I'll come back and I'll spend longer with you. <laughs> but have targets. When I started my music, I created a little pyramid. And at the bottom, I had all the little things that were easy gets. And at the top were the things I felt were larger gets. But it helped to keep me focused. And uh, a few years later, I created a, a proper business plan and that's been sterling and that's really helped. So if you're going to do something and you want to be successful, you've got to have targets and you've got to break them down. You've got to make sure they're manageable. You've got to make sure they're realistic. You've got to think about how you're going to get the resources together to get them. I could say more on that, but I think you get my drift. Number three, learn, learn, learn. In my field of work, that's what you've got to do. And I think in any work, if you're in business, you've got to learn, learn, learn. You might have to learn how to uh, go onto the internet. You might have to learn how to set up a website. You might have to learn about PR. Whatever it is, if you want to be successful, you've got to learn those things to make your business or yourself successful. And that leads into the other thing, which is network. You're going to need people to help you to make it possible. So network. And of course, they're helpful people who will cheer you on, but also give you uh, constructive criticisms and positive insights. And there's some people who will be naysayers. And them are the people that sometimes you may need to take them out of your phone book. <laughs> you may not need to visit their houses often. You may not need to Zoom them or whatever. You need to find those people who are going to really encourage you and push you forward. Um, and I've seen another message pop up here. I'm trying to read this. Looking forward to hearing your story to six. Oh, that's, that's another one. <laughs> um, number five, choose the doors to walk through. Now, when you're moving forward on the, whatever it is you want to do, there are going to be some great opportunities that come your way. But it's not every opportunity you should take because some opportunities are dead ends and some opportunities open up to great vistas and great mountains and valleys and hills that you need to walk through and down and up and around. <laughs> and number six, learn to bounce back from closed doors. I cannot tell you how many doors I've had closed in my face, not physically, but I mean, I mean it metaphorically, you know, the person that you've asked to give you a leg up, someone who you thought would probably promote your name or help you in some way and they just let you down, sometimes last minute, you know, um, you've got to bounce back. Right now, all of us, it's COVID. COVID is like the big closed door for a lot of us. And certainly for me in the music industry, it has been. Uh, a lot of us as musicians, all of our work's been cancelled. I remember in March when I heard what was happening, it was like I was getting calls and emails. I'm sorry, I know I booked you in September, but we got to, we can't do it. We're not sure what's going to happen. And I know I booked you for my wedding, but we can't. Ha and, and it was close, 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 close. It was like, how am I going to live? How am I going to survive? And I kid you not, I did have a few days of getting a little bit down and thinking, how am I going to do it? And then I had one or two great ideas and I spoke to my husband and we bounced some ideas forward. And then I started to do more online. I was already online, but I did more online. So I did teaching online, my saxophone lessons online. I did, I created my online music um, community group for female musicians. And um, I put up stuff on YouTube and that's kind of opened up some other international work. Um, some of which I will physically do next year. Um, some of which I'm already doing online, um, be it concerts and, and so on. Um, the other one is I've probably got my numbering a bit mixed up because I've done number seven earlier on. So this is probably number eight now, but I'll summarize at the end. <laughs> Accountability. You absolutely need to find someone you can be accountable to, especially if you're working on your own. Um, I'm a self-employed musician, so it's my own business, my own job. I do have a team of people that work with me and support me like Angela and Althea and a few others and my husband. But you've got to find a group of people you can be accountable to. So every Monday morning, I'm not going to tell you what time in case you ring my phone and say, are you in that group? But <laughs> Monday morning, I meet up with two wonderful women, Paulette and Sophia, and they've got different businesses. And we meet up for about an hour and 90 minutes. And we do it by Zoom now because obviously it's lockdown. 
But we talk about our businesses, we talk about our achievements that week, we talk about our plans for the next week, uh, our hurdles, and we give each other support. And what happens then is that next time we meet, they say, how, how did you get on with such and such? And um, what did you do about X and Y? And, you know, that keeps you going to have somebody like that in your corner, and just to have someone outside of your friends and family group who can sort of pull you along. In fact, all three of us are kind of going together. So we're sort of braving the wind together, which is really great because if I was on my own, I'd probably get there, but really slowly. Um, number nine is look after yourself. Really look after yourself. Um, think about what you eat. Um, think about the vitamins and the minerals that your body needs. Um, that's really key for me because my kind of complexion needs a lot of sun and right now we don't get a lot of sun so I've got to be thinking about my vitamin D and I have my magnesium baths just to kind of help with the toxins and things like that you know I'm thinking about what I eat I have less meat and dairy and, and fish and I'm going more vegan I'm not telling you could all go vegan because I'm sure you know Sainsbury's and, and Aldi and all them would be like trying to find my number and tell me what am I playing at but what am I saying Eat well, eat right, eat lean. If you're going for meat, you know, just, just look after yourself. If you want to be successful, you've got to go the distance. And looking after yourself also means get some sleep. You know, um, you know, you could work 18 hour days and 20 hour days to just achieve the goals you want. But you might not last three or four years if you do that. And I went through things like that. I, I did burn the midnight oil, trust me. And my family was like, mom, you're up too late. Millicent, what do you think you're doing? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And uh, I remember one time, uh, I hope my uh, accountant isn't listening. I was supposed to do my tax returns and I left it to last minute because I don't like doing that. And uh, I set up for a good 24, 36 hours, nonstop, getting it done to get it in because it was lastminute.com. Never do that again. And I wouldn't recommend it to any, anybody. If you sleep, you recharge your heart, you recharge your mind, you recharge your cells, um, your skin, have more water. You know what, I could talk forever on health and well-being, so let me not go there, but I think you get the point on that one. And um, the tenth thing I've learned is you just shouldn't be afraid to promote yourself. You've got to get your head around this self-promotion. And for me, that linked into the whole thing of, um, um, on, um, uh, sorry, I just saw another comment, it just threw me off. Um, the whole thing of self-promotion linked into the thing about success because my journey to success is my journey with success. I had to learn to be um, comfortable with it and to be able to say, hi, yes, as a gig, I'm playing and say, hey, yes, my, my latest CD is here. And if you go to that table there, I'll be there and I can sign it. Hey, that took a lot of courage. I didn't need alcohol to do that. And I, I don't drink because that's not really good for you. Sorry if you love drinks and you love your wine. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but, you know, look after yourself. But it takes a lot of courage to stand up and say, this is me, like the greatest showman. This is me. Love that song. Love that song. Um, but that's what you've got to do if you're self-employed or you've got your business to promote it. Okay, well, I've whizzed through that. Um, super, super stuff. I've mentioned age is not a number. Age is a number have a target and business plan. You must learn, 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 network, um, choose your opportunities, walk through those great open doors, choose the right ones though, bounce back from those closed doors. Things take time, build an accountability or support group for yourself, look after yourself and obviously to promote yourself. Those are not the only 10. I could write a whole book on success, but for now, that's what I wanna share with you. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments down here and I'm going to have a little look. And if you haven't got any questions, that's fine. When I sign off, still put them in the comments here. Tag me at Millicent Stevenson Sachs. If, well, mind you, it's Facebook. So if you're not friends with me or anything like that, um, just just put, put my name in. I'm sure it'll pick it up and I'll bob back and have a little look and, um, and, and talk to me and I'll talk back. Um, where can you find me? Well, in the description, I'll put my website for my music www.millicentstevenson.com uh, my success beyond the score website is where I do all my educational stuff and where I'm supporting people my podcast links are in there as well you can go to that 
and um, I think there's another link in there, but I can't remember. My brain is going. <laughs> That's what happens when I talk too fast. <laughs> oh, thank you, Taz. Thank you. So I'm going to have a little look at my screen over here. And let's see if I can find um, where it is to... Um, ba -ba -ba. Let's see if there's any comments here. Okay, so there's great, great comments coming up here. Um, hello and welcome. Adjust my very focals, people. Look nice, very focals. Um, okay, so great. Thanks, Taz. Taz, I will put my music in once I sign off. Thank you, D. Great advice. Love it. Say what advice it was, Dee. Love to know which one it was good, what you liked. Useful to watch back via Instagram at one's leisure. Yeah, I think so, because those 10 tips just went, whoosh, so you might need to slow it down. Um, 10 point fantastic. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks, you're very inspiring. Thank you, Dee. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to wait for 60 seconds. I'm just going to like kind of watch you. And if you've got a question, please put it in the chat. If not, I'm going to be saying sayonara. <laughs> Maybe it's something about success. You might want to know something about me. If not, I can answer the questions later. About the doors, says D. Okay, what do you want to know about the doors, D? Something particular about the doors? Wait for it to type. Drink, 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 drink. Now this is where I should take out my sax and start playing you a song, isn't it? And you go. <laughs> When did I start playing the sax about the doors and the people who support you? Wow. Um, okay, let me say, I think, Dee, what you're saying about doors, you get a lot of opportunities, but if you have a business plan and you have targets that you really want to achieve, when the mirrors of opportunities come, you will know exactly which ones not to do and which ones align with you. And that's the thing about doors. You've got to choose the right ones to, to walk through. Um, and the people who support you. Yeah, I have a lot of people support me from my family. I have a great mentor. I met him at the end of a gig. I hope he's watching Peter. And that just kind of happened by chance, you know, just doing this event and see, meeting him where we got chatting and chatting. And he's now my mentor. And that's really good. Um, lots of people that support me. And in terms of your own network as well, don't discount um, your friendship group, you know, there's going to be people in your groups who know something about accounting, who knows not something about the top of the products you want to do or about whatever it is. Don't discount them. They're part of your network. Um, get the hot flush people. Just put my fan on. Um, uh, the people support you. When did you start playing the sax? I started playing the sax and Taz, you're going to have to let me know what time I'm going to have to switch off soon. Cause I see it's five o'clock. I'm sure there's another event for you all to be, uh, doing so i started playing the saxophone when i was about 18. um i at school i did the clarinet and the steel pans and i saw the saxophone but the teacher wouldn't let me learn it he said no oh, no no learn the clarinet that is one route to learning the saxophone but maybe he didn't want me to learn it i don't know but i just did the clarinet but it wasn't until I left school and I went to church and there was a church march and a really great friend of mine had a trumpet and a sax. He was going to play the trumpet, looking for someone to play the sax. And I'm like, well, I play the clarinet. Um, perhaps um, I can play the sax. So I borrowed his saxophone. Mm, don't do that today. Disinfect that mouthpiece. COVID, you know. But I borrowed his sax, played it enjoyed the instrument and that's how I started. I have my own now. So that's that's how I started playing the sax. Um, it's about the utilities, the right doors open. Yes, I'm an artist but not found any useful mentors, sadly. D, um, if D, if you're a female, because I'm not sure if it's a male or female without looking and what have you, I have an online community group for female musicians called Time For My Music. And if you go over to the successbeyondthescore.com website, in there you'll see um, the information about it and just go check it out. And if it's something you want, go in there. Basically, each week we, we talk and we have different things we do. I, I rock up once a month and I give industry tips. So the last one was about uh, your stage presence. We'll be looking at things like uh, industry, things like copyright. Um, it varies. It just depends what it is you want to know. We do. 
and also once a month the women meet up online for a drinks chill and chat and they just kind of all catch up apart from that there is other stuff okay the next session was at 5 p.m on instagram oh my gosh let me sign off i'm talking too much people love your loves thanks for listening i will answer all the questions um afterwards i'm a chatterbox we believe it in it <laughs> but thank you so much and, and i hope you enjoy it sorry taz for going over i'm gonna stop right now <laughs> okay all right people bye and thanks for turning up really enjoyed it and thank you Taz and Lorna for inviting me. I've enjoyed it. Bye for now.